Are you ready? Yes, yes, I'm ready. I'm ready to start. So the next speaker is Maxim Pavlov. So the title of his talk is well <laughs> system of the intermediate long wave type in two plus one dimensions. Maxim, please begin. Thank you very much <clears throat> to organizers uh, for inviting me to participate in your very beautiful meeting and uh, large conference program. I'm happy to meet you here. So I will speak, speak today about uh, some kind of uh, integrable systems, which I hope will be very uh, intensively studied in coming years. So uh, what is a crucial point of my talk? Uh, you can see the equation at the top of this slide. So here is a function u of three independent variables x, y, and t. And here you can see operator t. t denotes shift, shift with respect to x variables. So you see here is operation is determined. t acting on u means that u, uh, which depends on x, now transforms to function u, which depends on x plus epsilon, where epsilon is such a shift. So uh, sometimes people can ask, we don't understand what means operation t minus one in denominator. So from such point of view, you can just easily multiply all this equation on this difference t minus one from such point of view, you will have a chain, chain of equations where you can introduce uh, instead of u notion like uk, where k means um, discrete variable. So from this point of view, you have function u, which depends on x, uh, no, no, y, t, and uh, discrete variable k. So this way, how to write instead of one single equation, uh, evolutionary equation, uh, how to write corresponding chain, which of course in such a case will be written in non-evolutionary form. But nevertheless, if you are not worried about such particular formal questions, you can say this ratio t plus one over t minus one, we can replace due to uh, rewriting uh, the concept of uh, shift operator as exponent. Uh, this is also written and over the second string formula line. So here is a definition, what is T capital is exponent of epsilon dx. From this point of view, the equation at the top of this slide can be written in such expanded form where everything which you saw previously as a ratio of um, two uh, operations like T plus one over T minus one. So from that point of view, you see infinite series in right hand side. So this equation can be interpreted as from one point of view, two plus one dimensional uh, generalization of Kartavec de Vries equation. From another point of view, you can consider this as just as a generalization of all possible integrable uh, one plus one dimensional models in direction that instead of one simple dispersion you consider infinitely many terms involved in this construction. So uh, we have in this picture, I'm speaking about precisely this slide, two crucial elements. First of them is infinite series of uh, dispersive terms instead of only one that is known for Kartavec de Vries equation. And second uh, crucial feature is that this equation instead of one plus one case can be generalized to three-dimensional case. So two plus one that was announced at the beginning of my slides. So this is integrable equation. Integrable equation means we can, of course, give different definitions. In my approach, I will speak only about case where we consider corresponding lux representation. So we have some linear equations and compatibility condition of these two linear equations give us precisely that equation that you can see at the top of this slide. So <clears throat> this equation, if we will neglect nonlinear term, so I'm speaking about U multiplying 
u y where u y this uh, is just first derivative of u with respect to y. So if we neglect this first term in right hand side, we see that this is linear equation such that corresponding dispersion relation is uh, in fact contains cotangent dependence like uh, people prefer in many applications in uh, uh, capillary, uh, capillary and uh, gravitational waves. So this is just way why I'm interested in su such a direction. And this is way why I was interested to do some computations. Uh, that paper, it was written at the top of previous slide, was written in collaboration with my friends, Ben Gormley, Evgeny Ferapontov, and uh, Volody Novikov. So we made some classification of integral cases, but of course I'm not going to tell you uh, biggest uh, picture in this direction. I am just interested to concentrate on very particular narrow class of solutions, which appears in descriptions of uh, dispersive integrable uh, extensions such that corresponding model will be very close uh, or known like for instance, shallow water or water with um, finite depths and plus vorticities. So I'm speaking about such a model. Okay, so that equation was known already, let's say approximately 10 years and uh, it's two dimensional reduction. So this is 3D, X, T and Y. So I'm speaking about two dimensional reductions. Two dimensional reduction means that we identify X and Y. So once we are speaking about two-dimensional reduction, this is equation which we call intermediate long wave equation was derived many, many years ago, at least at the best of my knowledge. It was derived in 1983. And uh, at least that I can refer on two papers written by uh, some great mathematicians, including uh, Yuji Kadama. He, presented uh, his talk yesterday. So that equation in two dimensions is well known. In three dimensions, that equation was derived approximately 10 years ago, also by a group of very strong mathematicians, including Zaharov, Honorato, uh, and um, Alexandra Desky. Unfortunately, I forgot who was the first, fourth one. But nevertheless, this equation was in, investigated uh, from integrability point of view, but in different contexts. And uh, it was used different approaches, how to extract this equation from integrable equations. Uh, so I am just uh, would like to mention this fact. And now I am going to speak about further generalization of this picture. So you see, at the top of this slide, we have equation which obviously contains dispersive corrections, U, Y, Y, and definitely due to definition of operator, shift operator T, we have also understanding that if we expand with respect to small parameter epsilon, this operator also give us infinite series of uh, dispersive corrections. So we have dispersive equation from the point of view that if in right hand side, we will expand everything with respect to small parameter epsilon, such right-hand side will contains infinitely many terms. Uh, I'm speaking about higher order corrections, dispersive corrections. So nevertheless, this equation can be simply written in more compact form that you see in second string formula line. So first equation obviously looks like dispersion less, but second equation is not. So here, delta capital means the ratio T capital minus one over epsilon. So again, if you substitute T capital and expand with respect to small parameter epsilon, delta capital has meaning of a differential operator of infinite order with respect to operation DX and parameter epsilon. From this point of view, this combination of two equations is dispersive. Okay, so in dispersionless limit, simply just that is written here. If you tense epsilon to zero, tend uh, to zero, then you see that second equation will be significantly simplified. Wx equal uy. So this means that pair of equations 
which look at the center of this slide, uh, which look simpler, became uh, as a PD of first order, where I consider combination of operation dx minus one acting on uyy as just term, which can be in two operations written as pair of uh, uh, non-linear equations or quasi-linear equations of first order in three dimensions. So in this picture, I'm speaking about dispersionless limit. It's easy to see that if you once identify X and Y, from that point of view, you need just identify W and U. From this point of view, that equation will be significantly simplified. So from this point of view, this equation is a uh, well-known like Hopf equation. So nothing interesting uh, for anybody of you, I guess, uh, uh, by this reason, my um, accent in this picture only on such a point of view that even if we start from Hopf equation, we have at least two simple choices if we would like to keep integrability uh, condition. First option is KDV equation when we add third order dispersive only one dispersive term. And second option is presented in this slide where we can add infinitely many dispersive higher order corrections. Okay, so here you can see list of simple equations of uh, that type. I mean, intermediate long wave equations. Uh, you already know how to determine non-locality uh, associated with field variable W. So from that point of view, all these four equations are dispersive. Dispersive if you expand shift operator T capital with respect to small parameter epsilon. Okay, this list of four equations where actually we can say that these are one component systems. So we can say function U is only one field variable involved in corresponding evolution uh, of behavior with respect to X, T, and Y, taking into account that uh, delta capital operation, we can just invert from the point of view that we can left and right hand side of the last equation in this slide, multiply on delta capital in minus first degree. Okay, so this is the list of four scalar equations. And the question is, is it possible to generalize this picture from the point of view that we would like to keep the same uh, kind of non-locality? Non and from another point of view, we would like to replace picture determined by scalar equations presented in this slide by vector case. And let us consider two component vector case. So here are three such examples. In next slide, you can see three other two component vector systems of the same type, intermediate long wave equation. So again, let me just remind you that all these six examples, three examples here and three examples here, they contain two unknown functions, U and V. They depend on X, T, and Y. Here we have small parameter epsilon. And uh, if we tend epsilon small parameter to zero, this means that our construction will be reduced to dispersionless uh, limit case. That I'm going to tell you a few slides later. Just now, I would like to attract your attention that all these systems keep a property to be for these systems integrable. And uh, integral in the sense that these systems are determined by corresponding lux representations. And uh, already when you look on this picture, all these examples look uh, more or less complicated due to you see here presence of such uh, functions like tangents. And uh, it looks like if you consider three component case, I'm speaking about generalization to three component case, four component case, et cetera, you will produce more and more complicated examples. But my, again, uh, idea is following. I would like to 
consider some generalization of well-known physical uh, model and consider its integral generalization for n component case. So I'm not going to describe all possible dispersive extensions. I will consider only one dispersive extension, which is common for arbitrary number of components in corresponding vector generalization. Okay, so what is the model? We have, you can see at the top of this slide, <clears throat> such a system which we call two plus one dimensional water bag system. So actually uh, this of course notation is not usual for people who are dealing with hydrodynamics because usually this model appears only when we identify X and Y, two independent variables. So indeed, when you look on second equation, if you identify X and Y, this means that second equation, you can immediately integrate once. This means that from the second equation, you will be able to recognize that W is just sum of these ratios, UK over omega K, where omega K, these are such parameters, which I call vorticities. So first part of equations is nothing but a corresponding end component reduction of so-called famous Benny uh, moment chain or in another language from the Benny system, which describes one dimensional propagation of long waves on fluid of finite depth. So uh, you can just imagine following picture that we have a fluid of finite depth, then we cut this fluid on many, many, uh, let's say quasi parallel horizontal layers. Then we say every layer has its common unique properties like size of every layer, or if you wish depth of every layer and corresponding velocities. The point is, <clears throat> that in this model, every layer has following property from that point of view, that at the bottom of every layer, this layer has some velocity, let's say VK. And at the top of this layer, we have some other velocity, which we can call VK plus one. The point is that in this model, this velocity, I mean, within, inside of this layer, changes linearly. So profile, velocity profile changes from VK at the bottom to VK plus one to the top of this layer linearly. So this model is presented <clears throat> at the top of this slide. And the idea was following. Let us generalize this picture to two plus one dimensional case. Why? Because our approach based on the construction of lux pairs, not for two dimensional systems, but for three dimensional systems. This is our just was how to say special, um, let's say <coughs> hint that we used in this construction. And here is uh, one disadvantage, which I just uh, did not mention yet. Here you see, I mentioned about vorticities omega k. And the point is, is it possible to add infinitely many corrections, infinitely many higher dispersive terms to, this, to the model presented at the top of this slide, such that our model will be still integrable. And our claim of course is following. Yes, indeed, it's possible. However, if we are interested to write corresponding formulas in most compact form, <clears throat> this problem is still open. What, it's, what, what it means? This means that <clears throat> we know how to write infinitely many higher order corrections with preservation of integrability, but we don't know how to summate all of them. We can write infinitely many terms and we need to find formula which will give us possibility to write it in most compact form as possible. So this question is still open for different values of omegas, for different vorticities. So as I said to you, if every vorticity omega k determines angle, when we speak about change 
of uh, pro velocity profile. So this means that in general case, our velocity profile can be presented by, let's say, a linear uh, piecewise profile, constant, uh, linear uh, constant uh, piecewise profile. So uh, disadvantage of this picture is that we are able to do this only for omegas, which are, could be equal one or minus one. Few words about the problem I will say later, but the point is that only for these two cases, when vorticities can be chosen only to unity or minus unity, just in these cases, we were able to find compact formulas. So that is written at the bottom of this slide. Some of omegas we choose with identification to unity, some of other omegas we choose with their identification to minus one. From that point of view, this set of, of equations at the top of this slide, we wrote just in two separate uh, parts uh, where W is just uh, from that point of view, height of corresponding uh, or maybe better to say not height, uh, but depth of corresponding fluid can be determined in a way like this is sum of UK minus sum of VK if we consider one plus one dimensional reduction. So again, when we're speaking about two plus one dimensional reduction, of course, such a straight uh, direct interpretation cannot be used. Okay, so that is a system of equations. I am speaking about its integral dispersive deformation. So all objects here are presented, all of them are determined. So from that point of view, I guess you have no questions. At the bottom of this slide, you see two linear equations for new extra or better to say auxiliary function psi. Compatibility conditions of these two equations give us precisely the integral dispersive system written at the top of this slide. This is dispersive integral deformation of the system presented in the previous slide here. So this is dispersionless system. This is dispersive extension, integrable dispersive extension. And again, disadvantage of our construction is that we were not able to write corresponding formulas for arbitrary vorticities, for arbitrary parameters omega k. We were able to do it only for cases where vorticities can be chosen to one and minus one. Of course, from physical point of view, maybe this is uh, very inappropriate. But again, if we are not worried about such compact formulas, we can just write infinite series because the strategy always very algorithmic and all higher order dispersive corrections can be computed step by step recursively. Okay, so we have this dispersive, dispersionless integrable system. At the center of this slide, you see corresponding lux, dispersionless lux pair. And again, I emphasize that if we consider its two-dimensional reduction, where we identify y equal, we for uh, our convenience used y equal minus x. However, you see that instead of minus x, I can write y equal kx where k is arbitrary constant because by appropriate shift, oh, sorry, appropriate scaling, uh, this of course, not so important. Nevertheless, the model which is uh, our interest was the system of equations presented at the bottom of this slide. So again, this model is two dimensional reduction of three dimensional system written at the top of this slide whose dispersal is like spare written at the middle of the slide. And now when on this first formula, I'm speaking about exponent of S derivative with respect to X, et cetera, 
Here, I would like to attract your attention to denominators in degrees, one over omega k. <coughs> this, <coughs> this is precisely explanation why we are not able to write correct compact uh, formula for all possible choices for vorticities omega k. Because you see, if we choose omega k equal plus minus one, this means that I will in right hand side to be able to write only of polynomials or rational functions with respect to S derivative respect to Y. And this case, exactly we were able to utilize in such compact formulas, which you see here in this slide. But point of view, point of view, if we, instead of omega k, choose even two or one over two, then we meet some obstacles. And these obstacles are such that, again, we, we, we will be able to write infinitely many higher order corrections with preservation of integrability, but without any idea how to summate corresponding infinite series. Okay, so small conclusion. We have <clears throat> three dimensional system of equations at the top of this slide with generic vorticities omega k. And statement is that for special values, omega k equal plus minus one corresponding dispersive flux pairs take the form presented at the bottom of this slide. So let's consider simplest case, one layer only. As, as you remember, I started from the description of fluid of finite depths where I suggested, let us cut on many, many layers. So now I'm speaking about only one layer, only one layer, this means at the bottom, I have velocity V naught. At the top, I have you you velocity. Just one minute. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have velocity V1 and velocity profile changes linearly. So from that point of view, corresponding dispersal slack pair written at the middle of this slide, corresponding dispersive extension is written at the bottom. This is simplest case. Okay, let's consider now case N equal to two layers. And vorticities have different science for two these layers. Now, next slide, we have the same vorticities for two slides. And from that point of view, just look on picture where I change uh, fastly. Two slides here, 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 here. So not so big difference, but nevertheless, at the middle of the slide, you see exponent of Sx as a product of two parentheses. Here you see is a ratio of two linear expressions with respect to Sy. So this is such a difference. So in this example, I just demonstrate you how even in two component case, situation is not so simple. So when we go to higher number of layers, situ situation becomes more and more complicated. But again, if we fix all vorticities to plus minus one, our situation is good. That was presented here. Okay, I would like to stop here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maxim. Okay, two short questions. Nobody wants. Okay, uh, Maxim, uh, indeed, you showed the structure at the beginning of this equation with shift with T. Can you say if it admits also variational structure? I mean, maybe. You have uh, definitely yes. So if you are speaking, for instance, about Hamiltonian structure or Lagrangian representation, yes, indeed, it's possible. Yeah. Okay. What about solutions? Did you try to find some interesting solutions? Multi. -solution? Uh, great, great question. So actually, you see, situation is following that in two dimensions. Uh, this equation was intensively studied, as I mentioned already, in fact, 40 years ago, and uh, some interesting classes of solutions were found. But in three dimensions, situation may be better 
because uh, here we can use more simple tools and at least what I would like to refer on one of my colleagues, Andrei Mironov, who recently studied some equations of uh, 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 whose lux pair contains shift operator. So from that point of view, indeed, we can construct multi-phase solutions or okay. maybe multi-phase solutions with some prescribed properties. Okay, thank you very much, Maxim. Yeah, thank you. So the next online speaker is Christian Klein. So we'll try to see him. He cannot be here because he's sick a little bit. 